Let us now estimate the population mean using the z-statistic with the population standard deviation known. Let's have this example. A survey was taken of U.S. companies that do business firms in India. One of the questions in the survey was, approximately how many years has your company been trading with firms in India? A random sample of 44 responses to this question yielded a mean of 10.455 years. Suppose the population standard deviation for this question is 7.7 .7 years. Using this information, construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean number of years that a company has been trading in India for the population of U.S. companies trading with firms in India. So, the first thing that you need to do again is to list down the given. So, our given here is the population mean, which is 10.4. Five, five. We have population standard deviation of 7.7. .7. We also have here the confidence interval, 90%, and the random sample of 44. The confidence interval, which is in percentage form, is basically what you can find on the z-score table. For 90%, the z-value is 1.645. The formula that we will be using for estimating population mean using the z-statistic with population standard deviation known is x bar plus minus z-score multiplied by population standard deviation over the square root of n. The estimation for the population mean is derived from the z-score formula. Formula. If you can notice, it has all of the elements such as the x bar, we have the z, we have standard deviation, and the square root of n. But instead of the z score, we are now trying to look for the actual number or the actual values located in that particular portion of the normal distribution. Now let's start to substitute the different values into the equation. Now, x bar here is basically 10.455 plus minus the z, which is 1.645, multiplied by standard deviation, which is 7.7, .7, all over the square root of n, which is the square root of 44. And so, if you compute the right side of the equation, we have 1.645 multiplied by 7.7 .7 over the square root of 44. And we now have 10.455 plus minus 1.9095. Since the equation is plus and minus, it means that you have to give two answers, which is 10.455 plus 1.9095 and 10.455 minus 1.9095. It gives you the answer of 12.3645 and 8. 0.5455. And so you write the final answer as 8.5455 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 12.3645. If you graph it in a normal distribution, the center is 10.455 and 8.5455 is can be located in the left side of the mean and 12.3645 can be located on the right side of the mean and since this is the interval you shade this area contained between the two values of x there is 90 percent confidence that you can find it between these values now let's go to estimating the population mean using this statistic with the population standard deviation unknown and so the t-distribution is used instead of the z-distribution for doing inferential statistics when the population standard deviation is unknown and the population is normally distributed. It follows the same formula for the z-score except that in the t-score, you have to change certain symbols. So for the t-score, the formula is t is equal to x-bar minus population mean over s 
over the square root of the population n. Now with the t distribution table, look at the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom can be solved by n minus 1. This basically refers to the number of values in the final calculation of a statistic that are free to vary. Now let's take this example for estimating the population mean using the t statistic with the standard deviation unknown. Suppose a research wants to estimate the average amount of computer time time accumulated per week for managers in the aerospace. He randomly samples 18 managers and measures the amount of extra time they work during a specific week. The sample mean is 13.56 hours and the sample standard deviation is 7.8 hours. Now notice here that we start to use sample standard deviation instead of population standard deviation. He now constructs a 90% confidence interval to estimate the average amount of extra time per week worked by a manager in the aerospace industry. The formula that we will be using here will be x bar plus minus t multiplied by the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. So this is basically similar to the previous formula that we used except that we are using here the t as a symbol that we are dealing with estimating the population mean without the population standard deviation or not knowing the population standard deviation. So again, the first step is to list down all of the given. We have the sample mean denoted by x bar is equal to 13.56 hours. A sample standard deviation with a symbol of s is 7.8 hours. We also have the random sample 18 and a confidence interval of 90 percent. Now given all of these values remember that you are now using t distribution instead of the z-score. So before going to the actual formula and solving for the interval you first need to compute for the degrees of freedom and in the alpha. You'll be needing this in order to locate the probability in the t distribution. So again, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So we have 18 minus 1 is equal to 17. Now the alpha is connected to the confidence interval. The alpha is basically 100% minus the confidence interval. So now we have here 10%. We are going to divide 10% by 2 because remember in the equation, it's a plus and minus. So you're basically dividing the whole normal distribution into two parts. This is why alpha is also divided by 2. So now we now have t with the alpha of 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom 17. We will now start to locate this in the t distribution. The first column shows you all of the degrees of freedom and the rows show you the different alpha values. Now you have to know whether or not it's two-tailed or one-tailed that you are looking at. For our case, since we divided by two, we are looking at one tail. So the alpha for one tail here is 0 0.05 and now that you have both values, look at where they intersect. And these row and column intersect at 1.740. So the value that we will be using for the equation for the t-score is 1.740. So now we have the values all set as well as the t-score. So we have 13.56 plus minus the, the t-score which is 1.740 multiplied by the standard deviation that is 7.8 all over the sample size square root of 18. Now this will give us 13.56 plus minus 3.20 and so we are given with two answers we have 10.36 and 16.76 and when you write down the final answer you have 10.36 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 16.76.
So at 90% confidence interval, you can see that the value of x that you're looking for can be found between the intervals of 10.36 and 16.76. We have already learned how to estimate population mean using the Z or T statistic. And the next thing that we want to learn is how to estimate the population proportion. The population mean gives you the actual number, while the population proportion gives you a percentage of that population. This is mostly useful for marketers who look for market share instead of the actual population. So it gives you the portion of the market that is currently using or advocating the company's products. But for this one, given the sample size that we have, how can we estimate the population proportion? And so what we use here is the proportion formula and the formula for estimating the population proportion is proportion plus minus z square root of proportion multiplied by 1 minus p which is also q hat over n so let's take this one for example. A study of 87 randomly selected companies with a telemarketing operation revolted that 39% of the sample companies use telemarketing to assist them in order processing. Confidence interval is 95%. And using this information, how could a researcher estimate the population proportion of telemarketing companies that used their telemarketing operation to assist them in order processing? So again, the first step is to write down all of the given. Our n here is 87. The proportion or a percentage that was mentioned is 39%. Now we're going to get the opposite of that one, which is Q hat is equal to one minus P hat is equal to one minus 39%, which gives us 61%. We also know that the confidence interval is 95% which when converted to an actual z-score with the help of a z-table, it gives us the value 1.96. Now let us use these given and substitute this into the equation or the formula. So we now have 0 0.39 plus minus 1.96 multiplied by the square root of 0 0.39 times 0 0.61 all over 87. You get, and so 0 0.39 minus 0 0.10 is 0 0.29, and 0 0.39 plus 0 0.10 is 0 0.49. And so when you write down the final answer, you get 0 0.29 is less than or equal to p hat is less than or equal to 0.49. And so when you interpret this one, it tells you that there is a 95% confidence that the population proportion of telemarketing firms use their operations to assist order processing is somewhere between 0.29 and 0.49.